Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Today I thought I'd show you how to turn a bowl with just the faceplate that comes with your lathe. Most directions today show you how to do it with a scroll chuck, which is a great way to do it. It's faster, a little bit easier, but it's one to two hundred dollars for a decent scroll chuck. So let's start out with just using this faceplate and in the process of learning to do it that way, we'll use the scroll chuck better when we decide to buy it. I've cut a, a blank out that is nine inches in diameter. That's well within the capacity of even a 10 inch mini lathe. A great little safety precaution is to bring up your tailstock during the initial stages and just put a little pressure on that. That's taken all the load off the screws. It's going to make this job a little safer. In preparation for this job, I've set the belt to the lowest speed range available in this lathe. This gives me a speed range between 80 and 800 RPMs. It maximizes my torque at this point, so I'll have the least stalling as I use the tool on this big piece of faceplate work. Okay, we're going to stand out of the way even with all of this precaution as we start this up. And we're going to bring it up to a speed of, oh, I'm at 300. There's about almost 400. I'm not jumping around too much. And I'll now use my bowl guy. Now that I've rounded this billet up and got it into balance, I can bring the speed up a little from 400, just about 800 RPMs. And this is also a good time to pull this tailstock back out of the way. Now that I've created our basic outside shape for our bowl, turned a nice foot that is a third or a little bit less than diameter than the opening. I've taken a final cut with a really well sharpened gouge to get a nice smooth finish. I've used four gouges in the turning of this bowl. I've had to sharpen, I have several gouges, but I've had to sharpen four different gouges. I'm now going to use just a straight edged scraper to scrape the bottom of this dead flat. And I want this to be very flat. I'm now going to take a set of dividers and just set them to a smaller diameter than my base. I want a fair amount of area around here. So that's a, a good diameter. Touch it center and just put a little line in there. And that's going to be a place where we're going to cut a little mortise in there. We'll start our mortise by taking our bowl gouge just hollowing that out a little bit and we're now going to take a scraper which is ground to 90 degrees on the end and we'll raise our rest a little bit to scrape you always want to do that in bowl work is raise the rest a little bit and we're now cutting right on our line just scraping a little mortise back in there. That's about three sixteenths of an inch deep. All right, I dismounted our bowl from the face plate and I mounted an inch and a quarter thick piece of maple on this face plate and I've rounded it up with a bowl gouge and scraped it basically level with the same scraper as we used before. And I'm now going to take the same set of dividers that are still set to the mortise diameter for the bowl. And that gives me the diameter that I need for a tenon on this. Now again, raising the rest just a little bit, I'm going to take this same scraper
and scrape a little tenon on here right into that divider mark. I'm close to my diameter, but this is a little too large yet. So I'm going to turn a little chamfer on that so I get an idea of how much material to remove. And then I'll take that distance off and put another chamfer on there. I can now see if my base is going to fit. And I can feel that I'm kind of on the chamfer at this point. So I know that I'm very close. There we go. Cyanoacrylate glue here. This is medium viscosity. And you can put it on the tenon, but it really doesn't do any strength there. The strength is really on the portion around the tenon. And it's the two faces there are meeting perfectly that will make this glue joint strong. Catalyst. I'll now Bring the two up. And we're turning our lathe into a bar clamp here. We'll let this uh, cure for five, ten minutes and we'll be ready to go. We'll now proceed to hollow out the inside. And again, a bowl gouge is our tool of choice here. And we're going to, starting in the center, start to hollow this out. Okay, we've gone about as far as we can with the bowl gouge. It's now time to go to a big bowl scraper which again, we're raising our rest, especially on inside faceplate cuts, so that we can point this downhill. And we're using a burr that we raised on the edge to just find this out. And as I come around the corner and I'm actually gonna lean that up on the rest so that I'm still dragging that burr as I go up the side. And this allows me to take a lot of the imperfections out and find that bottom to a very pleasing shape. The inside and the outside curves are fared to each other at this point. And we can get some 60 to 80 grit sandpaper and sand the inside of this. Well, I took the time to sand this out well, and I put one coat of finish on it. After spending all that time and effort getting this glue block to be a perfect fit so that we got good bonding, it's now time to cut the bowl off the glue block. And that's a pretty simple process. We're just going to bring a tool rest around and place it where we can get to the edge of this. And we're gonna take a little parting tool here and we're gonna part in the glue block with the right side of the parting tool being right on the parting line. So without further ado. If you're left-handed, this is great because you can hold the tool with your left hand and hold the bowl with your right, but if you're right, like I am, I put my elbow on the headstock and just lightly touch here. I'm not really holding the bowl, I'm just letting it. And you cut little ways, you usually can now just break that right off there. And there we go. 
I've now mounted a disc of wood. This happens to be plywood, but it could be solid wood as well. That is just a little larger than our bowl. And I've scraped some grooves into it with our chucking scraper just to get an idea of diameter. And lining that up, we can see that we need to scrape a channel in here that is just a bit bigger than this groove right here. And we want to make that have a tapered wall that tapers inward a little like this. And it'll be like the Morse taper in our headstock or tailstock and hold that bowl while we turn the foot. Sounds kind of daunting, but it isn't that hard to do. I'm just going to take this scraper and using it downhill. I have to make this channel wider than the bowl wall thickness. And I want it to be level on the bottom. And now we can kind of test our fit. You can see that we've got a ways to go. Got to remember when you scrape a little off something like this, if you're scraping this side, you're scraping that side. So you're getting double what you think you are. Just notice that snapped right in there. Not bad. Okay, now we can refine the base of that bowl. I'm not hurrying the tool and giving it time to cut. And of course our surface speed is dropping drastically as we get to the center, so you have to go even slower. Okay, now that I've sanded this all out, it's the way I want it. It's time to take it out of the chuck. All you have to do is just tap the chuck and that'll flex it enough that this will pop right out of there. Another method of refining the bottom is to just take a piece of wood on a face plate that's fairly thick. I did this end grain and I've turned this to a rounded shape that somewhat fits the inside of the bowl but isn't perfect but it's close. And I can now put a piece of cloth inside the bowl just to kind of blunt the effect of that. And if I had the turning slash cutoff marks still there, I would be pretty, I would be able to pretty well gauge where center is. And now I'm just going to put a little square of wood, about a oh, half inch square, I suppose, in there. And with a tailstock, I can pin this against that piece of wood. I'm pretty close right there. And again, I can now Take my same little gouge and go right in here and cut this right up to that block of wood, even cut the block of wood slightly, and get the same effect. I'll be left with a little nubbin in the middle, but I can easily sand that out. This is uh, particularly good for natural edge bowls in which you do not have an even rim, and it's a way to hold it and get this base refined. Well. Give this a try. It's a lot of fun and there's great satisfaction in doing it with just the faceplate. When you buy a chuck, you'll be better able to use that chuck for the experience you've gained here. Above all, have some fun.